everybody. It's Tyler here at the World Championships checking in 50-24 Raider Robots. What a phenomenal season. We're actually interviewing them right after they were a finalist here on noon. So congratulations on that. But also Waterloo winners as well too earlier this year. So a great season from them so far. 50-24, their story is all about simplicity. Building a robot that's super effective and just gets the job done. So we'll be following that full milk journey all the way through, talking about some of the different iterations they've had. And I can't wait to learn more about it. I got Ashlyn and Amara here, and we're going to be diving in. More into Raider Robotics coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Marla, let's start up with the ground up going on here. Talk to me more about your intake. When you were talking earlier, you've done a lot of iterations this season, yes. so I'd love to hear about what's gone into it. Yeah, of course. Our intake is a touch and go mechanism. Um, the note gets pulled up by our two rollers here, and then it'll move into the shooter mechanism. When we started with this, we knew we wanted rollers as that is the fastest mechanism, and we went through many different prototypes. Our first one, was um, actually powered by drills um, in the shop just to test the concept to make sure it worked. And then after that, we went through and we made multiple uh, more prototypes just to fine tune everything. And we tested things like the wheel size and the amount of squish we wanted to have on the note. And we did all these through multiple prototypes. We had about three of them, each of them testing new and different things and when we were happy with that we would go into CAD and we CAD up a model of our intake and then we go and we would work on it and we would like put it on the robot. Um, during some competitions we had a couple of problems with the intake. We have some funneling mechanisms here which um, sadly we got hit a bit too hard and they were 3D printed and it broke and so during competitions we had to work very fast and we made a new one out of Lexan, which is good and it's less rigid than the 3D printed ones, which um, has prevented it from breaking. Gives you a little bit of compliance on that, right? A little bit of, yeah. Yes, exactly. And so we've been able to work very fast on it as well. Um, yeah, it spans almost the entire length of our robot, which uh, helps the drivers as they don't have to line up as much. And then the funneling mechanisms do help bring it into the shooter. Obviously be working out great with the phenomenal season you had so yeah. far. Let's keep on that note journey. We'll bring the note in just a second, but we got to talk a little bit more about your flywheel and shooter first. So let's hear more about that, Ashlyn. Talk about the composition of it, and then we'll kind of see how that cycle works. Yeah, so our intake feeds up into our shooter mechanism through the flywheel, which are those blue wheels that you see at the bottom. The note comes in through the intake and meets the flywheels, and then it pushes it up into right below the flywheels at the bottom, and it will stop as soon as it hits the line brake, and then it'll kick it back just a little bit so it's not touching those wheels. We want to prevent them from touching the wheels just so that we can get those flywheels up to max RPM before we shoot it out to make sure we're as accurate and as reliable as we possibly can be. The line brake allows us to be accurate every time and to allow that note to sit at the same position so that we can increase that accuracy and that um, ability uh, to shoot pretty frequently. Our arm is attached to our, our shooting mechanism. This arm can move uh, depending on where we want to shoot, whether it be the subwoofer, say at the bottom of the subwoofer, so whether we're sitting at the podium or we're sitting at the amp. And this allows us to have a lot of maneuverability and also allows us to be able to merge one system into three different sections. So we're able to do three different things with the one mechanism. This allows us to keep it very simple, as you mentioned, but still have that range of mo uh, mo mobility and be able to do a variety of different things. Bringing your arm like you, like you did right there, it looks like really stable and on the ground. Uh, yeah. What kind of considerations to like your center of gravity did you have to put in when, in regards to designing this? Yeah, so we had a little bit of center of gravity problem because you know so much weight at the back of your robot. So that's why the battery is also there to kind of help gotcha. with that situation. We find that because of the speed of when we get our arm, it's not a huge factor in the thing. And that's why we also why we have the A-frame and it's in a triangle-like position to prevent that instability and that like moving backwards. We did notice as we increase the speed of the arm, the robot gets a little bit more off-centered and sometimes leans backwards a little bit. 
or when we're putting the arm down at that speed, it can cause it to slam against the swerve modules and like fly forwards a little bit. So we find a nice sweet spot where the robot moves very quickly, so we're able to be very efficient, but also slow enough that we're not tipping or stuff like that. We've had no tipping issues. That's also caused by the wide base that we have as well, and the extra uh, bit of base we have at the front with our intake to allow it to be a little bit more wide and then have that stability as well. Super efficient design. I love everything that's got into this. And obviously, as we mentioned, being division finalists, performing super well as well too. Yeah. So congratulations on that. We got to talk about your climber mechanism as well too, Amara. So talk to me more about, you know, when we're talking simplicity, I think your team has really nailed it here. So talk to me more about uh, what you're utilizing for climbing. Yeah, so our climbing mechanism is actually uh, attached to the arm and we will hook on to the climbing mechanism with hooks on the arm. And then when it pulls down um, using gravity, it will hook onto a chain here. The chain will hook onto there. And this really helps with simplicity as it is attached to a mechanism that we already had on our robot. And it prevents like overcomplicating it, having to add a whole other mechanism onto the robot. We're very proud of this. And our climb system worked on many different iterations of this. And we tested a bunch of different things. And this is what we settled on because of its simplicity, because it's very easy and we didn't have to add anything extra to the robot to do it. Well, 5024, first off, congratulations on an incredible season. A well-known team in Canada, but if you're not from that area, you really should be paying attention to this team and looking for a bright future out of them. So thank you for everything you've done here today. Congratulations for showing more about our robot. We really do appreciate it and good luck in future seasons as well. Thanks a lot. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.